So meatloaf is definitely one of the more boring things to cook. But today I wanna to show you a recipe for a bacon wrapped smoked meatloaf that will hopefully change your mind on that. Now the recipe I'm gonna show you today is based off of an Alton Brown recipe that I found online that is absolutely fantastic. I'll leave a link to it up above here so you can check it out if you want. Alton Brown's one of my favorite cooks out there and he has some awesome recipes. But enough talking about this, let's get right to so it. So the first thing we're gonna need is a bowl so we can start to make our sauce for the meatloaf. So let's get right to this. First thing we're gonna need is a little bit of ketchup and we're gonna want about a third of a cup of ketchup. Next, you're gonna want about two tablespoons of tomato paste. Get yourself some of these chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. Now you're just gonna want about a tablespoon of the chili peppers in adobo sauce. So I just took a small chili pepper out of there with some of that adobo sauce and just chopped it up nicely like this. Go ahead and add that in. So the last ingredient might seem a little weird, but well, you're gonna want about a half a tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder. Might seem strange, but I'm telling you the flavors are phenomenal in here. Now just go ahead and just give this a real quick stir. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just kind of mix it up a little bit. All right, that should be good like that. For the next step, you're gonna need a food processor. If you made meatloaf before, you know that you're gonna need breadcrumbs. So for this recipe, instead of breadcrumbs, we're gonna be using some barbecue potato chips. Just go ahead, put a few handfuls right into your food processor like so. Then we'll get the top on. And then just process this till it gets to a bread crummy kind of texture. That looks pretty good, just like that. Just go ahead and dump those right into the bowl. Now get yourself a cutting board. So we're gonna be cutting up some vegetables. So our first thing we're gonna need is about a half an onion. Just gonna cut these ends off. And then just kinda chop it up into chunks because this is gonna be going into the food processor. This should be good like that. Get one carrot, chop the ends, and then same thing, just chunk this up. All right, now I got a couple peppers. I got this nice, cherry pepper, and then I got a little jalapeno. I'm gonna use both these, and I don't want the seeds or the membrane in here. And then same thing with the jalapeno. We don't want the seeds or the membrane. All right, there we go. All right, so get your processor back now. Throw in all your peppers, chunks of carrot, and that half of an onion. Then you're gonna wanna throw in two cloves of garlic into here, and that is it. Throw the top on and just chop this up fine. All right, that should be good. Now just get a pan over medium low heat. Now take all those vegetables we just chopped up, throw them down in the pan. Now all we wanna do is just sweat this down a little bit. And to this you wanna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of ground sage in there too. This will add a nice little flavor. Probably about a half a tablespoon of sage. And then just go ahead and let this sweat out a little bit. We're just trying to get a little bit of moisture out of these vegetables so that our meatloaf isn't super wet. So this looks pretty good. We can get this out of the way and get our bowl back. And I get those vegetables that we just cooked, dump that in the bowl. Now we can add our meat. And for today, I've got a pound of ground pork. I ground this pork up myself. So might be a little more coarse than a normal ground pork. And then I have a pound of ground beef as well. All right, so in with the pound of beef and in with the pound of pork. Now you're gonna wanna add some eggs to this and it is one egg per pound of meat. So I got two eggs here. There we go. Now there's really only one good way to get this all mixed up and that is with your hands. So let's get right into this. You might wanna make sure you get the proper size bowl. This one is a little close to being too small. I think we'll be all right. It smells really good. You can smell the barbecue potato chips. That really sets this meatloaf recipe apart from any other recipe, along with that cocoa powder in there. Very good stuff. So just mix this up till everything is well incorporated. This is starting to feel pretty good like this. You wanna really break this down and work it pretty good so that once it turns into a meatloaf, it kind of stays together. Because if you don't really mix this up properly, you're gonna have a crumbly meatloaf and that is definitely not what you want. So make sure to work this very nicely, kind of like if you were making a sausage, you know, you want it really nice and tight together. That should be good like that. Let's get this to the side and we'll get ready to make this into a meatloaf. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, lay out a little clinch plastic. You need two sheets. 
like that. Now we're gonna wanna get some bacon, start laying it down, and we're just gonna be putting strip by strip next to each other. I know a lot of people out there do the bacon weave. I am not a big fan of the bacon weave. The reason for that is because of all the overlapping bacon, I don't think it really allows you to render down the bacon properly. And for a bacon wrapped meatloaf, you're really gonna want this rendered down and nice and crispy. So this is the best way to do it. Just lay down single layers of bacon and we'll wrap it up like that. Now just lay down enough bacon to cover all the clinch wrap. And if the meatloaf is only this big, we'll get rid of the other pieces of bacon. Now just get your meatloaf mixture, plop it right down on the middle and just start forming this into a nice meatloaf. And again, this is where you're gonna want it pretty nice and tight because we don't want a crumbly meatloaf. Nobody likes crumbly meatloaf. So go ahead and try and squeeze it as tight as you can. And we are looking pretty good like this, I think. Like in the shape, you don't want it too big. You want it to be able to cook evenly, bring in the ends. I think that's pretty good like that. Now, as you can see, we got extra bacon on the ends. So we won't need this piece and we won't need this piece. Now, go ahead and pick this, the back end up with the bacon wrap it over the top like that. Kind of roll it and tighten up the whole meatloaf together. And then do the same thing to the front side. Now, if the meatloaf doesn't totally cover the bottom side, it's okay. Kind of like that. I don't know if you can see. If you can see there, the bacon's not really touching, that's fine. This is gonna be your bottom side, so I'm not too worried about that. And you're gonna wanna just tuck that these bacon ends in and then kind of wrap this up as tight as you can. Just like that and then grab your ends like so and just give this a roll it's gonna help tighten this thing up just like that so now you just need to take this throw it in your fridge for a couple hours let it get nice and firm again because we added those hot vegetables in there this is pretty warmish it's very loose consistency i'm going to take this throw it in my fridge and i'll see you guys back out here when we're ready to throw this on the smoker so i let this rest in my refrigerator for about two hours so it is all ready for the smoker i got it all fired up out there so let's get this on a tray and we'll get it out on the smoker so i'm going to put this on a wire rack because i want to easily be able to move this in and out of the smoker so a tray is going to be perfect for that. So the bacon doesn't stick to this tray. I want to make sure I put a piece of foil down. Now, since I have the foil, I don't really want all that fat just sitting at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and just poke a few holes into this tin foil, which is going to allow the fat from that meatloaf to drain out. Here's our meatloaf, nice and chilled. All right, there we go. So I want to put the bottom side up on the edge. So I'm just going to loosen the ends here a little bit. So I'm just going to try and tuck this saran wrap underneath a little bit. And then I'm just going to pull and flip this right over. And then I got to just scoot it up a little bit. Perfect. That's why you're going to want to put it in the fridge for a while. If you tried to do this before, it would have just been a complete disaster. We got this down on the tray now. The only thing I wanna do is just give this a little bit of seasoning. I just wanna go with a little bit of black pepper, give it a nice little color, a little bit of flavor there too. I love me some black pepper. All right, that looks pretty good like that. That was the front side look. Oh, we could use a little more here. There we go, a little better, nothing crazy. So this is ready for the smoker. Let's get out there and get it on. All right, got the smoker all fired up. Got the maple and oak today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this meatloaf right on the grate here. And that's why I wanna use the tray because it's easy to bring this thing in and out. Don't gotta be messing around trying to scoop this thing off the smoker, but let's get this thing in. 
let it start smoking. Now I wanna try and run a low temperature so I can get as much smoke flavor as I can because once this thing gets up to about 120 degrees, I wanna try and get my smoker as hot as I really can. I'm looking for about 350 degrees and that is because I wanna make sure that that bacon gets nice and rendered and hopefully a little crispy. But more importantly, all that fat needs to render so it's not chewy. That would be an unpleasant experience. So I'm gonna keep this thing at 250 for probably another hour or so, then I'll go out and check it. But since it's a video, let's go right out there and check it. All right, we are a little over an hour in on this. Let's give it a check. Oh yeah. This thing's looking really nice. Let's check that out. That bacon's rendering down pretty good actually. Let's get a temperature check on this. We're at about 130 degrees. It's still looking pretty good. I've been maintaining this between 250 and about 275. So I wanna take this up to about 145 degrees. So I'm gonna try and run my smoker at about 350 degrees if I can. I'm just gonna start throwing logs in there and I wanna get this bacon nice and rendered. We're partially there, but it just needs to get a little more heat. I don't think it's gonna take much longer, maybe about a half an hour. So once this thing gets up to temp, I'm gonna take it off, let it rest for an hour. But for now, I'm gonna let it cook and I'll see you guys when it's done. All right, this meatloaf is done. We got it up to about 130 degrees after about an hour. The bacon looked very good, even though I was only running the smoker around 250, 275. But at that point, I was able to get my smoker up to about 325, 350 and maintain it there for another 45 minutes. And then this thing looked phenomenal and we were at about 150 degrees. I was about five degrees higher than I wanted, but it'll be fine. I'm not too worried about it. So I pulled off the smoker at that point for a total cook time of one hour, 45 minutes. Then I let it rest for one more hour and here we are. This thing looks fantastic and it smells even better. So let's get it sliced up so I can give it a try. As you can see, this bacon rendered beautifully and this thing has an awesome crust on it. Give that thing a look, huh? Check that out. This is what you want in a meatloaf. Come on, this is going to be so good. So let me go ahead, get some slices out of here. Yep, that bacon cuts beautifully. That's telling me this is perfectly rendered. Oh yeah. That is fantastic. Check that out guys. That is a beautiful meatloaf. You can see just a touch of smoke there. I didn't think we'd have too much of a smoke ring because that bacon, but check that out. That is wonderful and this bacon is cooked perfectly as you can see. Now this is a delicious meatloaf. All right, I can't wait any longer. I need to give this meatloaf a try and I wanna give this end piece a try because this is going to be delicious. So here we go. Mm, wow, so amazing. That is freaking good, wow. First off, bacon rendered perfectly, bite through. Adds a great flavor. Get those barbecue chips right off the bat. So good. Then the adobo with chipotle pepper you get. But this isn't spicy at all, so don't worry about it. This has some great flavor. Sage comes through a little bit too. This is so good. Mm. Man, I don't think I can have meatloaf any other way. It's got a little hint of smoke. It is so good. Make sure you guys give this a try. I guarantee you will be cooking meatloaf a lot more than you did before. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna put a link of everything I like to use down in the description below, so be sure to check that out. If you're a first time viewer, be sure to subscribe to my channel right over here. And if you wanna watch some other awesome barbecue videos, you can check this one out over here. But thanks again for watching. And most importantly, guys, get out there and smoke something good. Mmm.